Hello! Today we are talking about what to do when there's not enough money to retire. My mom is Jill. She is in that situation. I am Tara. We are living on a dime to grow rich. Authors of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. We only have 100 copies, give or take of the 20th anniversary edition left after that this edition is not going to be around so if you want the 20th anniversary edition about how we wrote the book and all that this is the one to get okay all right so livingonadime.com is where you get that now if you have questions about how to retire when you have no money please post them and we will answer them as we can all right here we go mom just start all over again <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about, this will cover everybody, whether you're a single mom, already, you know, on Social Security, and any different types of walks of life. We should have some tips for, you know, everybody, what we're going to talk about soon. Just, and you might think that some of them aren't going to work for you, but pick out one, try it. If you're not, you've got to try this stuff and give it a chance. You know, just say, well, th don't just say, this isn't going to work for me, so what am I going to, you know. But you need to try this stuff. The only way you succeed on things is if you actually actually try them, you know. Yeah. So you need to do that. Okay, so, so I'm going to read a viewer comment here real quick to get us started. And this is actually what inspired me to do today's show. She said, I saw a show where they said you need a million dollars to retire. Not true. The secret is to owe no one a dime when you retire. My husband retired six years ago and I was already prepared. I had not worked since 1991. We had paid off our home, cars, all debt. We had put a 30-year roof on a house, insulated and added siding, insula installed a new heat pump and new windows. We went into retirement with only $3,000 in savings. That's all they had. No 401ks, nothing. Each month, we add to our savings, and since retiring, we have bought a new dryer, paid cash, and an older pickup, which we also paid cash for. We have only added to savings and not spent any. There are two of us and, hold your breath, 17 cats. <laughs> we have reached $200 a month on groceries, which includes all cleaning and toilet paper, cat food, everything. We have a well-stocked pantry and three small chest freezers full of food. I shop sales and stock up with good sales. We really don't do vacations except day trips because that's what we prefer. We both love to read and have hobbies we enjoy. When we need something, we buy it, but it's not a lot that we need at our age, and we can be content being at home. Hope this helps Carolyn. Just so you know, because we get comment after comment about how there's just no way you can just live on a fixed income well, or that you can survive on a fixed income mm -hmm. so this is not coming from us this is actually coming from a viewer just so you know we're not the only ones and we've gotten other testimonies like this yeah, too we get it all the time uh, one thing if you can start when you're young saving but that doesn't that happens only probably a very small percentage of people actually do that you don't realize you're going to need money for retirement till you're tar and mike's age usually and then you panic and you think, what am I going to do now? And that type of thing. So even though I say start young, the reality is most of you, most people won't. But the second thing is to get out of debt. That's that is probably what I think the number one thing that yep. for for retirement. You may wonder, okay, I need to save. I need to save. I need to have retirement funds. It's not. That's not going to do you any good uh -uh. if you have debt. That's not going to do you any good if you don't do some of the other things we're going to talk about, like having a more frugal type lifestyle that you get used to and in the habit of using. But we did the numbers on our video the other day. And, okay, let's say you have a house payment. And I'm going to give you some numbers, so don't, don't turn me off when I give these numbers because I know that's easy to get lost when we do this. But if you have a $1,500 house payment, $500 for car payments, and five, say you spend five hundred dollars a month. This is all for one month, for um, just credit card debt and other types of debt. That comes up to twenty five hundred dollars a month that you're just putting towards debt. For a year, that's thirty thousand dollars a year 
that you're putting towards debt. Now, if you think about this, you're making six, say you're making $60,000 a year, $30,000 or half of that goes to debt. Well, if you didn't have that debt, say you got your debt paid off and you're still making $60,000 a year, you can take $30,000, since you're used to living off $30,000 anyway, take that $30,000 you're saving from your debt and you can put it into some type of a savings. Within three years, you're going to have 90000 You see what I mean? But the other thing, too, is if you don't even do that much, if you get rid of your debt, then when you come to retirement, you're going to need 30000 or less to live off of. You know, And so that's why this debt is so important that, to get rid of it. Because you look like you're ready to say something. Well, I was just going to say, people go into retirement, and the reason why they need so much money is because they are having to manage this debt that yeah. they've gotten themselves into. Yeah. You just can't go into retirement with car payments, credit cards, house payments, boat payments, vacation house payments. You can't, you, you're not going to get anywhere. No, and many financial advisors don't always tell you that. Mm -hmm. What they try to teach you is how to live the high lifestyle that you want to live right now and how to start saving and put it into things in order that you can live that same lifestyle mm -hmm. and part of it too once you get out of debt you're gonna to have to realize that um, you can't you probably won't be doing things the same as what you are now you can't have that you won't be able to take as many vacations maybe your lifestyle will have mm -hmm. to change and that doesn't mean it's going to be a bad thing uh, Michael was saying before the show, and I found this to be true, the older you get, you're going to find out if you have your finances under control and things going fine with them, you get more content. You don't crave as much stuff and as many things as when you were younger. You know, you're, you're not wanting that brand new car and wanting this, you know, the bigger house and all of this. You're not you're not living the same type of lifestyle and so it's going to change and you won't need quite as much money as you did before so all mm -hmm. these things factor in together you for saving for um, for uh, you know when you get older so the number one thing get rid get of, out of absolutely debt. every single item of debt including your home especially your home so stop talking about retirement and talk about getting out of debt on the debt. You're yeah. so worried about retirement, but you're not worried about getting rid of your debt. It's just crazy. And you need to be careful because I hear this all over the internet and all my friends and different people talk about, well, you, what are you doing for retirement? You know, that's like a buzzword. Mm -hmm. People are like sheep. You hear one person say something or talk about it, and then it just starts snowballing, and everybody thinks this is the be-all, end-all, that, you know, this is really important, and you've got to do this. And financiers and different people start commercials. Everything talks about what are you doing for retirement, this, that, because they know you're worried about that and that you want to hear about that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way to go, that you should be worrying about retirement quite that much, you know. You just don't follow the crowd all the time. Think a little bit out of the box. Don't just think like everybody else and worry about your retirement. You start worrying about your debt. They're not giving the debt a, a second thought, but you start thinking differently and don't just go, you know, along yeah. with the crowd. Yep. So, um, what are some of the other things that we were going to... Um, Oh, I know. You need to learn now to do a, a frugal lifestyle. Don't wait till retirement to start putting things into practice. Every part of your life, you need to start saving money. And if you're trying to get out of debt, you should be putting these, this a frugal lifestyle into practice anyway in order to get out of the debt. And when you do that, when retirement comes, you're going to have good habits already set into place. They're going to be automatic. For example, I have friends, they will go for a whole weekend and they leave their air conditioner up freezing cold when they leave. They like at 62 to 65 degrees. It's ridiculous. Yeah, in a huge house. And they say, well, I want it to be cool when I come back. You may have to give up a few comfort things if you want to get out of debt or save for retirement, you know, type of thing. 
And so you can't do that type of stuff. You have to rethink things, every little things. Like the other day I was, I forget I was washing my hands or something. I don't leave my water just running all the time when I'm brushing my teeth. Or I'll put soap on my hands first, the liquid <laughs> soap, and then I turn the water on and rinse them off. You know, mm -hmm. you just start these habits. Uh, turn your heat down lower and start wearing layers of clothes. Um, watch your grocery, how, you know, on your grocery bill. All the tips we give you about saving on groceries. Start putting this stuff into practice. Well, the, let's go back to the air conditioner for a minute. Oh, okay. We'll go back to the air conditioner. Because <laughs> I saw a tweet or something. I'm not on Twitter, but somebody tweeted something and it got somewhere else and I don't know how I found it. But anyway, the down south, now they're recommending that you keep your AC at 78 when you're at home, 82 when you're asleep, and 85 during um, the times that you're gone. Oh my word. You would have thought mm -hmm. they were telling people to go stand in a vat of boiling oil. <laughs> I understand it's down south and hot. I grew up in Kansas. I know hot and humid, which is why I live in Colorado now. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. But let me tell you, 78 with the air conditioner on down south is the same as everywhere else. Once your house is 78, it's cool. The humidity is taken out. And these people were being a bunch of babies. Yeah. They were a bunch of babies. And this, this one guy was like, well, I work when it's really hot, and I expect my home to be ice cold when I walk in. Well, stop being a little brat and suck it up. Well, it is we've not... gotten so spoiled, really. We have really? no clue. We're just like spoiled children, and when somebody goes to take something away from you, they get very, very upset. And oh, not my even... goodness. I know, and they just have no idea. And then they're the ones that when they lose their job or has have some kind of catastrophe happen they panic and fall apart and they want everybody else to pitch in and help them pull themselves yeah. together you can't live like that you have to grow up and be a responsible adult and self-discipline your you know have self-discipline and that type of thing and and stop worrying you know being you got to give a little you have to sacrifice it's not an easy life i'm sorry i hate to tell you this i wish i could say it's all a bed of roses but one thing, it's not as bad as it seems. Once you start practicing this stuff, I think any of our viewers on there now, a lot of them practice these ideas, and they'll tell you it's not as bad as what you no, think once see, you start going. Once right here's a comment. I'm sorry, Marilyn, but she says, I could never do 78. I live in southern Mississippi, more like 68. No, you can do it. Yeah, it's just a matter of... You just don't want to do it. And that's where people need to stop saying, I can't do it. 78 is a perfectly reasonable temperature in your house for air conditioning. It's perfectly reasonable. You just don't want to do it. And that's where you guys have got to stop making excuses and say you can't do that because okay. it's not true. Well, I'm... Okay, I'll admit it. I'm an old lady. Aren't I, grandchildren? <laughs> they keep teasing me. Yep. I am older. Do you know, half the time in the summer, it can, we can have a heat index of 100, anywhere from 104 to 110. And I will go clear until like 3 or 4 in the afternoon with nothing but a fan and no AC on. Now, I'm sorry. If you're younger than 70 years old and I can hack it, I would think that, you know, that yeah. somebody younger could hack it. It's just yeah. a matter of adjusting and adapting and getting used to it. I mean, I don't have the money to do it. I don't have, never had, well, I do now a little bit more the past couple of months, but I have not had money to do it. So I just didn't do it. And that's fine if you got plenty of money to do this and you're totally out of debt. But if you aren't, you may have to suffer a little bit. You may have to get a cool rag and put on your head. You may have to do an, any number of things to put up with it. But you adjust. Sometimes I will have to take a shower, a quick three-minute shower in the afternoon just to cool myself down a little bit. But look, I, I've lived to tell about it. And I've lived in Kansas. How long have I lived in Kansas? I don't know how many years. How old are you? 
45 plus years. Long time. And it makes so, you glad you're a Christian because <laughs> don't want to be living in that place for much longer. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, it really frustrates me when I hear younger people say, or even people my age say, well, there's just no way I can do it. Yeah, you can okay, if you, you have to. Want to. You just really don't want to. Mm -hmm. So, are we having any questions? Um, okay, so let's see. We're talking about AC and we're talking about... So, are you going to go into more on the houses because people had housing questions? What about housing? Paying it off and, and getting a cheaper house and all that. I didn't know if that was oh, going to be down there. well, yeah, that's fine. We can do houses. Okay, so one of the things you may have to do is if you have a house payment or you have an extra large house, you may need to sell your house and get something smaller that is either paid off or that you can afford. You may have to move to a different state. You may have to move to a different city. Or even a different area different within your area state. Different area of town. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. Somebody said, well, how do we get rid of our home? Do we rent? No, we're not saying you need to rent. Although, that's not necessarily a bad idea. If you're 80 years old and you can sell your house for two or $300,000, it may be worth the hassle or not having the hassle of doing maintenance and everything and go ahead and rent for the rest of the 10, 15 years that you're in a house. So, you know, you kind of just have to sit and figure out for you what would work, what would work the best. Yeah. But no, I would just say get a cheaper house that mm -hmm. you can afford. Yeah, a less expensive one to, to help you get out of debt too if you're needing to do yeah. that. Another thing too is when you, uh, while, if you are working, while you are working, like she mentioned in the, the letter tar, the email tar read, try to get as many maintenance things done as possible mm -hmm. while you have an income coming in, mm -hmm. like your roof repaired, uh, any major things, make sure your heating and air is running pop properly. Even that goes into like, um, what, medical things, maybe like dental things. Make sure you're, you, you're caught up on your dental stuff while you have insurance and get all that stuff in place. When you reach Tar and Michael's age, you need to start practicing those habits by getting everything repaired and in shape. Don't go buy a expensive brand new car. You know, when you're mm -hmm. 50, 55 years old, you need to save that money for something else mm -hmm. and just drive a less expensive. You may have to cut back. I know an older woman on Social Security and, and that type of thing, and she spends $150 a month on cosmetics. Those things have to change. That's where the frugal lifestyle comes in. You may not be able to go play golf every weekend if you or go to the racetrack or pay for all these football games that you go to, you know, watch or just Oh, I know, I have friends that will go one day to fabric stores. They spend all day traveling from from one fabric store to another and this could go for any hobby and they'll spend $1000 in one day on their hobby. You've got to, you know, be careful with all this stuff and, and stop doing quite all that. Just look in your own life. Where am I spending money that I could save on or that I don't need to be spending at all? You know. Yep. Do we have another question? Mm -hmm. um, what do you do as far as housing? What do you do when you have a house that is falling apart around you? How do you finance that when it's thousands of dollars? <laughs> well, it depends. Uh, like, if it's going to be too much to fix, and it's a large home, I would be tempted to find something smaller and in better shape mm -hmm. type of thing. Uh, what you need to do is just start doing one thing at a time. Don't mm -hmm. look at the overall picture because you can panic. Like, you know, you may need a new roof, you may need new plumbing. You just, just concentrate on one thing at a time and try to save the best you can and get the best prices and have one thing at a time. But if it's a larger house, that's falling apart, you might want to cut your losses. For me personally, I would do that just because because I'm physically sick, a little bit older, and by myself, the thought of just having to deal with all the repair and the maintenance that would go with that type of thing would be just too much for me in one way. So I would rather just sell the whole house and, and um, get something smaller in better shape. Mm -hmm. Now, it just depends on you, but you know, like I say, just do, if you need to stay there, then just do one thing as you can. As long as you're progressively doing something. Yep. Don't just 
look and get overwhelmed and not do anything at all. And I mean do little stuff every oh, day. Yeah. Like if if the if war, all you if can a washer do, needs to be changed in your faucet, start with that. Or if you that. need to fix a little hole in your wall, then fix the little hole mm -hmm. in your wall. Just do something every day. You don't have to go and redo the entire house, but once you get started, you'll be surprised at how much all these little repairs add up. Yeah. It, and learn to do some of it yourself if you're still capable of it. I mm -hmm. mean, we're so lucky to have YouTube that uh, that you can go on and find out how to do a lot of the stuff yourself on, on YouTube. And that's another thing. If you have kids, for the future reference, teach your children how to do basic home maintenance or car repair. That's, you know, we don't do that anymore. And they need to know for just this type of situation. Mm -hmm. Another question? Um... Then what is, um, whoops, hold on. Oh, oh, for moving, Cynthia says, I moved an hour away from everyone to be mortgage free. Listen, put it into context, guys. Cynthia is exactly right. Okay, so let's say you don't live near your grandkids or your kids and it's an hour away. Huh? Yeah, if you're retired, that extra two hour drive to go see them it not going to cost you anything in time. Mm -hmm. Gas, even if it's 4 or $5 a gallon, that's still way cheaper. Mm -hmm. If you're talking going from a $500,000 house in the city to a $150,000 house an hour away, there's no comparison. Yeah. It's, it's completely doable and very actually very easy and it, the stress that will be off yeah that's what i think people don't realize and i want our viewers to pop on here and tell others that when you get out of debt when you get some of these these smaller payments and things like that what a difference it makes in the stress in your life and you don't realize you get rid of that all that stress like that you feel more like maybe taking a small part-time job for a few mm -hmm. hours a week because you don't have the heavy stress. It's not a burden. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you're just going to get out of the house and have a part-time yeah. job and you'll have extra money coming in. Yeah. This all kind of works together, you know, if you do it right. But don't just sit there and say, well, I just, I just don't know what to do or I can't move away from my kids or I can't, this house has memories. The memories aren't going to feed you in the future, and the memories aren't going to pay your bills. Yep. And I love memories too, but I've left my memories behind moving from house to house, and I've survived. I still have my kids. I still have my grandkids. I still, I still have, that's what's important to me. And they would rather have me relax, stress-free. They don't have to worry about me now. They probably rather me, would rather have me get rid of my memory house so that they don't have to worry about me taking care of me later on, you know? Yep. So reason this thing out. Get the get rid of the emotions. Get rid of the emotions mm -hmm. and start thinking rationally. Mm -hmm. We People don't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think re rationally or responsibly or with self-discipline. You've got to get those emotions out of the way. Martha wants to know while we're on houses, what is the lowest water temperature for your water heater to still be sanitary? You cannot put your water heater hot enough to be sanitary. No. Sanitary is boiling, which is 212 degrees. That is not safe. Yeah. So you just turn it down to whatever you feel is good for you. A lot of people just do it on vacation I all have, the time. I have mine on vacation. We have a bigger family. We don't. But you can just put it on vacation, but it's the scrubbing action of soap that is the sanitary part of water. So it's People that. People used to say that the dishwashers aren't the same now, but years ago they'd say dishes are cleaner and more sanitized when you put them in the dishwasher. Or, yeah, in the dishwasher. Well, the thing is, it was the same hot water in the dishwasher as the hot water you use in the sink. And so it would, they were no more sanitary than if you hand washed them, you know, either way. Now they have special controls, don't they, where you can mm -hmm. use a sanitized thing. Yep. But your hot water heater, you just can't, you can't do that with it. Yeah. Um, okay, so still on houses. Wanda wants to know, what do you think about living in a mobile home park where even after your home is paid off, you still have space rent that goes up every year? Well, so here's the thing. 
even with the house being paid off, you're going to have to pay taxes and insurance. Uh -huh. So you need to figure out how much you could buy a regular house and see if that compares to what you're paying for your mobile home uh, rent. Land rent, I guess, is what I should say. So let's say your rent is 150 <clears throat> for your land and your property taxes would be $50, let's say. I'm just assuming you're living in a cheap place. Well then, yeah, I would probably look into considering buying a real house on a piece of land that's smaller or something. But that may just be one of those things like taxes go up every year for houses almost, or at least it seems like it. So you just kind of have to figure out yeah, you what's going to work You really for need you. to put pen to paper and sit down and recall uh, or research online and get the numbers. That's why when I was reading off these numbers about a house, you know, for 1500 car, 500 debt, add the numbers up for what your area is and your needs. You, you'll have to just do some looking and like Tara said, pick which one would work best. Okay, I don't know what mom said. Oh dear, what did I do? Mom is perfectly taken care of. If she wants to turn her AC down to 65, <laughs> There is uh, more than plenty money I got for her plenty to turn, of money. Her, turn her thing, AC down this to 65. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm so used <laughs> to it now, it doesn't bother me. And I don't even feel, I feel yeah. just as comfortable sitting with the fan as having the AC on. So, no, I could turn it up if I wanted to now. But why, yeah. if I'm comfortable, why should I spend, you know, do yeah. that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, um, back to hot water. I don't know if I finished, but about 120 degrees is usually, but... Some water heaters say that and some don't. So that's the about number for yeah, it. Yeah, what kind of kids do I have that let me just, <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, yeah, so mom is fine. <laughs> don't. <laughs> oh, dear. You said something. And it just and got it everybody got all on all fire. Um, okay. Let's see. Susan says the main problem is that we are spoiled in the USA. It, That's true. what it boils down That's to. That's it. That's it. I'm sorry. That is exactly what it boils mm -hmm. down to. And, um, I mean, yeah. People, just with this food stuff lately with the virus and everything <clears throat> like that, people have gotten to where they, um, it's like, oh, I can't find this or I can't find that. Well, you're not starving. You know, instead of being glad that you're not starving, everybody's hollering about what they can't find or what mm -hmm. they can't do. <clears throat> and so... Um, not in a third world country. Don't have to. Um, okay. Yeah, we're not, Dave. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, my sticker's <coughs> not for sale. One of my viewers sent me that. He sent me that, but I should... I'm telling you, I should run for president. <laughs> I would get it together, people. Um, okay, so... Kim, my parents didn't move because of memories. My mom passed. It was honestly big burden to clear out the house. I was guilty over getting rid. Thank you, Dave. Getting rid of her things. Don't do that to your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Don't lay a guilt trip on your kids about your stuff in your house. Mm -hmm. It's just stuff. It's just a house. Let me tell you, you ain't taking it with you. And I've started getting rid of my stuff now. I'm trying to get rid as much as I can. I ask the kids what they want. They get to pick and choose whatever they want, and the rest of it I'm going to get rid of, and then they can just go in and just toss it. But, yeah, you leave. People worry about their kids for all kinds of different things, but they don't think about the burden that they're going to leave with them, you know. So Liliana, maybe, says, how do you pay off your house? Well, you put every single penny that you get and you put it on Everything. your mortgage. I don't care if it's $5. You pay extra. Now, the one thing you have to make sure is make sure on the mortgage statement, you write in where it says principal payment. That's where you're paying extra on the amount that you owe. Otherwise, they are going to put it on your next month's mortgage payment for the whole thing. And they're not actually paying the principal. So, just put all your money that you can on it. And if you get it. confused or can't remember, call your bank or go in and talk to your bank and ask them what you can do, you know, to slowly pay it off. But just put it, apply it to the principal. And then not yeah. the payment, but to the principal. And you take, I don't care if it's only $10 a month. I didn't realize, because now my payment was lower than most. 
But I lived in my house for about 10 years before I realized if I had been applying $10, if you can imagine, $10 a month to my house payment from day one, I could have paid my house off about 15 years earlier. But I didn't know that. So you've got to apply it at every every little bit helps. Yep. Even if it's twenty five dollars, even if it's or fifty dollars, yeah. just apply it to the principal, and it, it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. When you do it that way, it's mm -hmm. a snowball effect. But you know what? It's like we always say: if you're ready to drive in and get that cappuccino, think you know well, I could apply this to my payment. And that's how we paid off ours. Was we could not afford to pay off our house, but every time we had any little extra bit of money we would put on a hundred dollars or we would put on fifty dollars even when it was just really bad we tried to put something every month towards our house payment to the point where towards the end we were like wait a minute i think we could put three hundred dollars mm -hmm. well wait a minute i think we could put five hundred dollars <gasps> well wait a minute i think we can do a thousand dollars and then at one point we actually said i think we can put ten thousand dollars and pay off our house and we were like how did what happen? yeah <laughs> But you it was start, a continual You start snowball. getting so excited because you see the and difference. And you were finding things. And you start and looking. You find yourself looking, where can I yep. find more money to do this? It gets to be almost Selling like a fun Selling cars. Game. That's what we did. We got in a car accident and they paid us for the car. And we were like, well, wait a minute. We don't really need to replace this car. Let's put it on the house. Yeah. So that's what we did. And so just keep adding If to you it. have collections of things that mm -hmm. you've got in boxes you're not even looking at, sell those collections. Yep look around and find you you have to work at this you can't just have instant fix you have to look around and see what you can do you know if you need to get a second job and take all the money from that second job and pay you know even if you're working 10 extra hours a week and paying it all towards there debbie says we've paid off seventy thousand dollars of our debt Way go girl go. they have fifty thousand left on their house and they will be debt free just wanted to say thank you i followed everything you said and it does work work it does <laughs> it does can you, know. you hear the excitement in her you know yep. in her uh voice i mean it's exciting they'll tell you it's exciting when this mm -hmm. happens so yep all right, so I think, um, oh, have mercy, Lisa. Her HOA is 375 a month. Oh, but that covers water, gas, heat, oh, garbage, parking, yeah. shoveling, and snow removal. Okay, that's, yeah, you know. Yeah, see, that's yeah. another thing. You, bal you write, mm -hmm. write this stuff down and balance it out and do some figuring, and some of these things are fine, you know. Beth says her brother lived like he did when he was in college, and he paid off his house in 15 years. Let me tell you. Most college kids today, if they would not have student loans, if they would go to college without getting student loans, and that's very possible. Mm -hmm. Don't give yeah. me no lip about that one. You can go to school without getting student loans. A lot of people loans. are doing it. But you could have money saved for a house in two to three years. If you and your husband are both working, You in two to three years, you could pay cash for a house. But people don't do it. No. And it's crazy. That's living so. the frugal lifestyle, see. And we have on, on our website and on our YouTube videos, we have tons of more tips of I, and ideas of mm -hmm. how to do these things. Yep. Okay, and sell lots of stuff. Yep, lots of people saying sell stuff. Um, all right. What about New Jersey? Listen, Peg, I hate to say it, but you're just going to have to move. If you can't afford to live in New Jersey then you're just gonna have to move mm -hmm. to a cheaper state. New Jersey is one of the highest uh, prices for housing, but you know, that's your choice to stay there. So you may just have to go ahead and move to a place that's cheaper. Yeah. Okay. These are all choices. These are all choices you yeah. have to decide and make. You can be burdened yeah. with the debt, or you can make choices to get, make that go away. Yeah. And who knows? If you get everything taken care of, you can always move back again yep. after a few years. You How know? do you stay so disciplined doing that, though? Well, I would start out small. If you're just totally out of control at this point, I would just do a few little things at a time. Always start small. If you look at it all, the whole picture, you'll, you'll get overwhelmed. And if you try to do everything at one time, you won't be able to do it. Pick one or two small things 
And what happens is you become so proud of yourself and so excited and feel so good about it on those couple of small things, you want to try more. Some of it too is just getting into habits and just try one habit at a time. And you, every couple of weeks then, at it, once you get that one habit in place, mm -hmm. you know, it may be just turning off the water when you're brushing your teeth. I mean, that's t starting small, but you get used to it. And it, it's kind of like you'll forget, but then you'll start doing it more and more. And so you put these habits into place and you'll get better and better. You know, it's like mm -hmm. starting out in kindergarten and working your way up to high school. You just do a little, you don't, kindergartners don't do the same work that high schoolers do. You start small and they work their way up. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, and it's like for us right now, um, the area that we're living in and for what we're looking at is literally a million dollars for the kind of houses that we're looking for. So we are looking for a few hours away because it's cheaper. And so is it necessarily convenient? Mm -hmm. eh, I don't know. We'll see. Half our kids are part of our kids are up here. We don't know if they're going to be going where we are or not. Probably because he just bought an RV and is planning on living in it. But, you know, you never know for sure. But sometimes you just have to take the risk, so to speak, and jump and do something mm -hmm. that will that you think logically is going to work better for you. Now, it may not always work out. You may make, make a mistake. Well, you just make a mistake and move on. We've made tons of mistakes, yeah. let me tell you. But, you know, that's what we're doing. We're moving a couple, we're, we're trying to move a couple of hours away because we just can't find what we want up here because it's just too expensive. expensive yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you've got to... Um, You've got to do the, you know, you've just got to do what you've got to do. And so as far as going along with staying disciplined, I'm just saying we keep our eye on our goals. Yeah. And what we want. It's a matter of making a decision. Yeah. I want to do this. I really want to do it. Yeah. And that's why I keep asking for the testimony of some of these viewers that have done it. Because I feel really sad for people that have heavy burden and heavy debts mm -hmm. because you cannot even fathom what it feels like to be, to, free. To be debt free. I mean, you don't realize until you're debt free what a burden that was. It's like you're enslaved. I mean, it really is like you're chained up in and enslaved. Your whole. Oh, my daughter. Your whole. <laughs> deliver me! Can I get rid of her? Michael, you want her back. <laughs> Sorry. But I you didn't know, mean to interrupt. I just couldn't read you, this. You know, you really can't realize it till it's gone. And you feel just your whole world changes. And to me, I would have the self discipline just to have that feeling, you know, that type of thing. You're not too big for me to spank. <laughs> Lots of people have said when they bought their new house, they didn't go out and buy a whole bunch of new furniture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My first house, it cost me $200 for everything. Beds, couches, dishes, all my appliances. Or not appliances, but I mean like microwave, that kind of thing. All that stuff. Landscaping. It doesn't need to be no, done the first two weeks do, after you move in, that, you know. So. Yeah. Do it okay. a little bit at a time. Anyone? So, that we have tons and tons, but do okay, you, no. let's go to the next one with cosmetics, clothes. No, I already did covered you that, that one. Yeah. Okay. So and then so let's do groceries. Because our Dining on a Dime cookbook right here, everyone is saying that they have saved with groceries. <laughs> and we only have about 100 left. So go to livingonadime.com if you want this edition of Dining on a Dime. Well, it's basically like we've said before <clears throat> and other, for other things is... You can cut back on your groceries. Most people can. And uh, start saving on your grocery bill. And you can take that money that you save from your groceries and apply it to your house payment or to apply it to your debts in one way or the other. And we have all these tips and ideas, you know, in the book, on the website, and the YouTube channels. And you just need to start getting disciplined with that. Something like that. Is that what you mean? Is what mm -hmm. you're wanting? Yep. You know? And so if you start saving on your groceries, another thing that will help you when you're in retirement, you'll find you're not having to spend as much money on groceries because you've already got that discipline set in place of watching your grocery bill, you know, mm -hmm. ahead of time. So Yeah. Okay, so somebody said 
What do you do if you don't have a 401k when you retire? You go back and you start at the beginning of this video and you watch the beginning of the, this oh, video. Oh, I never even thought about yeah. it. And, Mom does and not I'm going to cover that here. Yeah. This one, that's the next thing I'm going to talk about. Yeah. I do not have a 401k. Never have. I ever never even thought about it. No stocks, no bonds. No, nothing. No, nothing. No, nothing. I don't even have a pension or anything because those things you need to be, I'm not saying not do them, but don't have all your eggs in one basket. I would do the debts before I have anything. Get those mm -hmm. out of, because what good are those things going to be if you got debts and everything when you retire? Mm -hmm. You're just going to take all that money and put towards your debts trying to get it paid off during retirement. Mm -hmm. Get your debts paid off. If you have a 401k at work, your debts are paid off and you want to contribute to it, that's fine. But you don't need it. All these tips and ideas we've been given have been given you. You don't need a huge savings. You don't need lots of stocks and bonds or for for a one k. And see, everybody's going to react to me saying that because you have been so conditioned by all types of things saying you have to have these things because companies and they tell you this stuff because the they, news this the, the news. news commercials because you guys want to listen want to hear this they think this is what they want to hear so we're going to say it and they're going to say it enough that you're going to become brainwashed and i'm sorry it's horrifying how much we're getting brainwashed perfect example was a few years back i was sitting i'm thinking oh my goodness where is this coming from every person in the whole wide oh i'm going to really i better not say this i'm going to get in trouble should i not i better not it's say it's about that. time you said some <laughs> to get me in trouble okay everybody started and i don't knock it if you're using it that's perfectly fine and if it's working for you do it but everybody jumped on the bandwagon to use vinegar and baking soda to clean their house i mean it was like they were South just dumping the stuff in their whole they used it for cleaning everything it was all over YouTube it was all over the news women's magazines everybody if you weren't using vinegar and baking soda to clean your house what kind of a woman were you <gasps> I mean you know it was horrifying I'm thinking you're killing your this, family where you did don't... all of this come you know there's no need for this another thing is you have to use a cleaner cleansers for everything people are spending tons of money each month on cleaner cleansers and stuff and i'm thinking cleaning products where did this come from so i just realized today people actually buy special cleaners just to clean their countertops yeah i never ever I heard of that never done why that. are you doing that if the hot soapy water is good enough to wash your dishes and your silverware you're going to put in your mouth don't you think it's good enough to wipe off your countertops but all these things what happens is somebody picks it up and runs with it and you hear it all over the news like i said youtube different you know you're passing this oh well it has to be this way no it's just one person it's old wife tales that's what they're called old wives tales they get started and they go and go and go and they'll last for decades even hundreds of years sometimes and so you know you you're conditioned to listen to this stuff you have to have 401k what are you doing for your 401k People talk to you at work about it. Well, what, what are you doing for your pension or your 401k or your stocks and bonds and that? And we think, oh, no, and we panic and we get frightened. I don't have money to put into a 401k or I don't have anything saved up. What am I going to do? Stop trying to fit. You have, they have you a square box and your situation is a circle and you're trying to stuff yourself into that square box they've made for you and it's not going to work. You can do other things. You don't have to do what the whole world is telling you to do. I love the example. I think it's in New Zealand where they say they have problems sometimes with sheep. And they say people are, the Bible says people are a lot like sheep. And the sheep, one sheep, one of the sheep, are sheep's flocks or herds? Flock. Flock. The sh one, of, one of the head of the flock of the sheep will start running in one direction and everybody follows them, follow, all the other sheep follow after him. No idea where they're going. They're just following all the other sheep and they start falling off a cliff and they all just keep following and falling off the cliff until they actually pile up. I mean, it's kind of gross in a way if you yeah. think about it. These poor sheep, but they just keep following, going straight over a cliff. 
So, you know, be careful when you start hearing these things and you get so tense and stressed out, I have to do this, what am I going to do? Just relax, think rationally, put pen to paper and figure out what some other ways that I can do things. What are you laughing about? Well, this vision of all these dead sheep at the bottom I'm of the cliff loaded. I'm, I'm like... sorry. Well, uh. It was a really weird story because they said the ones on the top kind of lived and survived. But it, well, I imagine, look at the cushioning they have. I know I shouldn't oh laugh. That's goodness. terrible. I'm sorry. Oh, have mercy. I know. What a I'll, I'll find a better example next time to tell you guys. But... Well, and here's the thing. If you are putting all of your faith into your pensions and your stocks and your everything that was yeah um you, then um you are and you're still paying for debts you're not really i mean you're, you're getting not, ahead but you're not, not really, really getting ahead and why are you paying interest yeah huge amounts of interest on those debts yeah. And get a little tiny bit of interest in the other stuff. And you know. so let's see. Somebody said, and oh shoot. And you can't depend on oh, those. You yeah. can lose those. You could lose the companies. Could falter. You know, declare bankruptcy. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people lose their pensions, lose yeah. their four hundred one k's, and even stocks and bonds. All of those could disappear. Yeah. But if yeah. you have your house paid off, that's a pretty sure yeah. thing. Um, okay, so Mindy says, during these uncertain times, do you still recommend to pay off your house or should I put more into savings? Yes, get your house paid off. Then you won't have uncertain times. Yeah. That's what we're trying to say. I was going to say, say, this isn't even an uncertain time for no. me because the house is paid no. off. I'm still... Yeah, because um, that's why you don't why have certain it's times. Uncertain. I would say once you get $5,000, $5,000 will cover any major thing like a car dying a refrigerator washer dryer major house issues maybe not the roof but you know other stuff and then get everything else paid off you know just get it paid off because it's not going to do you any good to have that money in savings and then you're paying all these debts and for most of you what you don't realize it's not going to take you if you get really serious i mean truly serious about this it's not going to take you long yeah. It took me five years, and I was making less than people on minimum wage would make yeah. to pay all my stuff yeah. off. If you're working, and your husband, you know, both the whole both cup, mm -hmm. the whole whole couple, <laughs> if the couple, if the couple are both working, yeah. you know, you can get this paid off easy in yeah. two three years. You can, and can you imagine? You struggle and yeah. be careful for two or three years, and you get everything paid off. I mean, mm -hmm. it, that's a no-brainer, and so you don't have to worry when an uncertain time. Yeah. I don't. I didn't even think about anything yeah. that's been happening. It didn't even phase me, mm -hmm. you know, or you guys either, really, for that matter. Yeah. Because we don't. We've got our money so under control, so taken care of, that it doesn't really hurt us. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes, Dave. Uh, any tips so then you can have a steady income. Oh, yes, I was getting to that one. Let me, let me, hold on, I'll do yours, Kristen, I'll do yours in just a second. Um, there was one more on housing. Oh, well, this is kind of along with the debt thing. Jennifer said, how do you feel about keeping a credit card, using it once in a while to keep good credit if your bank looks at that? I would. I do. I know I there's do. people like Dave Ramsey that say don't. I don't agree with that. Yeah. I really don't. I have seen my kids try to get started with no credit. I've had friends who have had no credit try to buy a house and it is a pain you in the patootie. It. It's called self-control. I don't put anything on my credit card that I don't have cash in the bank ready to write a check for it that minute. It. Yeah. I use my credit card as a convenience for making things easier. I do not spend more money mm -mm. because I put it on a credit card. I don't care what anybody says. I don't. I go into the grocery store and I buy what I need to buy. I don't go just wandering around looking for things to buy. I have the self-discipline to know I don't need to go buy 10 new shirts today yeah. because I have shirts. I'm not just buying them just to buy them. Well, I'm not so, buying them because they're on sale yeah. if I already have a closet full. And so what I, I do would. is I keep the credit card and when I travel, like coming back here to Tar and Mike's, 
I use that credit card. I have all the money in the bank so that when I get home mm -hmm. and the bill comes in, I just pay it off. Yeah. And that way I keep my credit card active. Mm -hmm. I got a good credit report, although I don't mm -hmm. need a credit report for any yeah. reason because I just pay cash for even my houses when I go to buy them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Kristen wants to know, I turned 25. I've been saving my whole life thanks to my parents. I just got my first investment property to rent out in January. Are there any other tips that you have to have a steady income coming in? Well, you got to have something to have a steady income coming in. So, I mean, if it's your rental property, then you're just going to have to make sure that you keep tenants. But, you know, my kids are doing all kinds of different things. Like, one actually has a real job. And he ended up getting sick, investing in some stocks, and now he's living off of the stocks for the moment. I'm not necessarily saying do that, but what I'm saying is just think outside the box. Is there a business you can start? My other child, she does goat milk cream. Oh, by the way, guys, Ellie opened back up the soap shop, the goat milk cream, goatmilkgifts.com. She has a few soaps left. We still can't get the goat cream ingredients, but she has a few soaps left. So if you guys need some soap, she has some soaps, goatmilkgifts.com. But she sells soaps and goat milk cream. So just my other son, he is a designer. So he does graphic designs for us and he does all of our eBooks for us. And so like today, oh, I forgot we have a new, put the link in there guys. We have a new meal plan that came out today that I forgot to tell you guys about. And so he does those kinds of things for us. So just think outside the box. You're already doing way better oh, than 99% yeah. of your peers. Mm -hmm. So you just keep going and keep doing it because... And just try yeah. different if you want jobs. Does she want like a regular job to do jobs? Is that what she means? Well, I don't know. She just you know, said you can income, do, so... You can just do part-time jobs, you know, mm -hmm. get a part-time job and try different things. I was talking to Ellie this afternoon and she was folding a towel and she said, I learned this at one of my jobs and it was when she worked with uh, dogs at a dog place. Mm -hmm. And she said, I learned how to fold a towel. And I was telling the kids how at their age trying different jobs is actually a good thing because mm -hmm. you learn all kinds of different skills all kinds of different things to you know do late use later on in your life that come in really handy for different jobs so yeah um and i use my credit card to buy stuff online so you know um okay yeah i do too but i always like again as soon as the bill comes yep. in or whatever i pay it immediately yep Catherine needs help with budgeting don't spend money you don't have that's it period seriously if you don't have the money you don't buy it like a Starbucks. If you can't pay that medical bill, you're not supposed to, you don't go to Starbucks. What what use is pretty a, much what, what it use is. is right now to budget. I mean, I know I have to pay $35 on my water bill every month. I don't need a budget to tell me that. I know exactly in my mind the list of things I need to pay each month. They have to be paid, so a budget doesn't help me because I just know I've got yeah. five bills, you know, and I have to pay them. And so write, writing down a budget is sometimes an excuse to, you think you, it's kind of like meal planning. If I write the meal down, then I've already planned the meals. Mm -hmm. You may not get them cooked. And a budget is the same way. You keep writing budgets or making budgets, but you're not being careful with your spending. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't do it doesn't help you spend mm -hmm. keep from spending, you know. You're yeah. just using an excuse to make you feel less guilty that you're mm -hmm. you know not yeah. doing something. So guys, Mike just put the link in there for we have a, a free printable for five easy chicken recipes and meal plans that we just put up on the website today. Dave, my designer, did this. It is super, super cool. Um and it's free. You can just get the meal plan for free. We aren't charging you anything for it, but to help you with all the chicken that's out there. Um, Cause ground beef is going up and we did a, vi a video on that. Um, okay, so we have a question here. Kimberly says, my husband is about to retire, not ready for this. Oh, have mercy. Mike <laughs> is never allowed to retire. <laughs> I'm not working after. <laughs> Car accident. Do you have a retirement financial plan info? Worried we won't have enough to pay the bills. So here's what you do. You add up your bills. 
and you just see if that's the amount of money that you're going to be coming in matches that if not you're going to have to go back at the beginning of this video and watch the whole thing you're going to have to cut you're going to have to get a different house you're going to have to cut cars you need to be 100 percent debt free before he retires and if you're not then you need to get 100 percent debt free however you need to do that mm -hmm. um because you just need to have no debt when you go into retirement and then you should be fine yeah but go back to the beginning that's what this whole video is about but if you aren't debt free now you got to think about this you can get a part-time time job mm -hmm. even you know if you want to retire yeah you may have to you get may a have to start job. out with a part-time yeah. job and work your way into mm -hmm. total retirement yeah um okay let's see when you don't have a car, you're not tempted to dash out for ice cream or treats constantly, says Don. That's true, but that I've is... never done that. Yeah. I don't just think, oh, I want some ice cream and run to the store. No. I've never I, done that. And I don't run to the store for just everything. That's never I go to, to me. I go to the grocery store about every two weeks, and if I'm out of something, it's very rare for me to make a special trip to the grocery store to get something. I try to make do with something else that I already have in the house, or I totally change what I'm planning on having, yeah. and so that I don't have to go to the grocery store. I never make quick trips for anything mm -hmm. like that. Well, yeah. I did go get a Dairy Queen the other day, I'll confess. I got a Dairy Queen. So. Well, I but I just don't think I'm sitting at home, I'm going to no. go to Dairy Queen. No, uh-uh. No. I just, that never I'm just comes, food. yeah, it never occurs to me, I'm bored, I'm just going to go get food, because we really, we don't but, eat out that much, so like, Mike and I have a date two or three times a month that we eat out, and then Sunday after church is our eating out, we'll go to Wendy's and spend like 15 <laughs> bucks going to Wendy's for the whole family, but... The, that's our live in the high life now that we are rich you know we didn't do that before but see that's but, part of the self-discipline and learning to change your habits into more frugal habits you know those are mm -hmm. just all the types of things yeah. okay go ahead and continue on stay healthy so this is a big one medical care so we get it medical care can be a lot but here's the thing I know a lot of people that spend the amount that it would cost them for the extra insurance to cover that Medicare doesn't cover and that kind of thing. They'll spend that in coffee. They'll spend that in quilt supplies. They will spend mm -hmm. that in eating out. You've got to have your priorities. But secondly, there are a lot of things. Now I know this is touching a nerve. But there are a lot of illnesses like type 2 diabetes that is absolutely preventable. It's your choice to have type 2 diabetes. I'm sorry. I'm right there with you. I am in the high risk category and I got to get my weight off before it's a problem for me. So I'm totally there. But I know how hard it is. But that's your choice. So it's your choice to stay in good health as much as you can yes we realize there's not, situation i get it the eat healthy things, yeah and i don't mean all the expensive organic special foods i'm no. just talking don't overeat do portion control sizes that type of thing and and exercise and don't you don't have to pay a gym to go exercise no. you can just take a 15 20 minute walk every day or go up, I, Dave just said push-ups in the background. Yeah. What I do for exercise, I do take a short walk, but I have stairs in my house. And I go up and down those stairs a hundred times a day just for different things. I have, because I have a chronic illness and it's hard for me to exercise a lot, but I still try to do it. I'll lay my phone in the other room so that if it rings I have to get up and walk in there and get the phone I don't have it sitting on my lap at all times mm -hmm. these are all things you can start doing to keep yourself you know healthy mm -hmm. and fit and that type of thing control your food Stop intake eating so much food. and doing that and you'll find if you start controlling the proportions of your food you'll be saving on groceries and you can take that money and apply mm -hmm. to your house or your debt and that type of thing yeah I mean and 
you don't need to do keto. You don't need to do paleo. No. None of that stuff. You need to stop eating so much food. You don't need get a special on a 1200, diet. 1500 calorie diet. I don't care if you eat 1200 calories in Klondike bars every day. If that's all you're eating, you will lose weight. Wait, it's yeah. been proven time it's and just, time again. You're eating 1,200. The calories is what that it is. That sounds pretty good. Maybe maybe <laughs> I should do the Klondike bar <laughs> diet. I think I should I do think that. You should, I think so. Um, okay, next. So we hit the heating oh God, food and all that. And yeah. you guys, stuff may happen, and that's just part of life, and you'll yeah. just have to deal with it. And we do get the that, best but you, do can, what you can, and things do, you know. Yeah, Jennifer says invest in toilet paper. Then you can resell it when we go through all this again. <laughs> okay. Um, We've already touched on these, so. Make repair. Okay, yeah, so we hit all. So anyway, so if you guys have any other last questions. Yes, Michael. Andrea Mobo says I paid off all my debt yesterday. Oh, way to go. Andrea! Oh, she paid off all her debt. That's so exciting. I, and it you go. feels good, doesn't you go. it? <laughs> I need to come up with a payoff debt. You do, yes. yeah. Get a special sign to throw up in the air. Or something. Dancing was never you know, thing. really, this is a big deal, guys. It's hard work, and and these people have worked hard to do this, but they've done it. They yep. have been in the same situation that you're in, and they've done it. They've <laughs> they've said, I can't do it, or I, you know, I, it's impossible. A lot of them do, and they've actually tried it, and they've done it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys, you're allowed to work on Social Security to earn up to, I think it's $44,000 or something like that a yeah. year. Just go Google it. It's 40 something thousand dollars a year that you can earn. Mm -hmm. um, so you can work while you're on, on um, Social Security. Social Security. Mm -hmm. um, and all of that. So, okay. Any more, dear, that I missed? And here's another thing. Even if you couldn't, there's other ways. For example, you could go out and mow people's yards. You know, if you were mowing a couple of yards, or mm -hmm. if you were doing yard work for them, or if you could take in, I don't know, do some baking for them. Yeah. Just a couple of things like that. It's a little bit extra money coming in, yeah. not that much. You can actually, I think it's 400 Michael would know more, $400 a year you can make um, for like a hobby type business yeah. that you don't have to even pay taxes on. $400, yeah. you know, well, it's just $400. That still is four hundred dollars you can add to things. Hey, for Christmas you know. presents. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's let me look through Well if you're physically unable to do normal work, there are other things you can invent for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can't do yeah, yeah, Mike said if you can't uh, do, do normal work, you can do other things like you could do mowing yards, you could do, you know, whatever. Well even a, I know people that sit and do hand sewing bindings on quilts and they yeah. make really good money doing yeah. that. So you can find something. Okay, Nancy wants to know. She said it's good to see you. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Do you have, what's the most frugal tip you've ever learned? Ooh. The most frugal tip I've, well, I don't know if you mean like paying off my debt, if that's what, what you mean, Nancy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's helped me more than anything is just making up my mind to get that debt paid off. Yeah. You know, and to do that, do yeah. everything I can in my power. Yeah. Uh, holler if there's if I didn't answer your question yeah. right. So Brooke says I gave my daughter-in-law your cookbook. Ooh, only a hundred copies left. If you guys want some, living on a dime dot com. <laughs> she just told me yesterday she is down twenty one pounds and knows what a serving size is now. She also said they have saved around two hundred dollars a month using our book. I'm telling you guys. The book pays for itself. It pays and for I just itself. love it. We've been getting more people comments to us that say they started saving on their grocery bill and doing the portion control size. Yeah. And they're saving money on their groceries and losing weight all at the same time. And it's all, we're almost good as Weight Watchers. Yeah. Do you realize that? Uh, Christina says, now that you're debt free, what kind of giving are you choosing to do? That's what I look forward to the most. Actually, you need to be giving before you're debt free. Yeah. If you're a Christian, Mm -hmm. If you're a Christian, you need to be giving way before you're debt free. Yeah. Because God has instructed us that he gets the first 10%. Well, I don't know if that's exactly how it's phrased. But you're supposed to give him 10%. I know that's Old Testament. We're not going to get into big. We'll do a video we'll on do that. A video but time. if you're not tithing, even if you're in debt, you need to be tithing first. But even with tithing, you're supposed to yeah. have tithing, giving, and uh, then giving gifts, mm -hmm. and then giving the alms and that type of thing. And 
I've always given, no matter how little I have, I've always given. Yeah. And the thing is, what's exciting about being out of debt, now I can give more. She means and, other than tithe. Well, even just... Yeah, we just... Yeah, we, we all do all just three We do all of, of that. Yeah. We give all kinds. Yeah. We do our tithe, but then I give, give on yes. top other things on top of that. And what's exciting is now I can give even more. And, yes. And it's really funny. When I do on my giving, it's like I see something, a need maybe, and I want to give mm -hmm. to it, but I don't quite have enough money to do that. And, yeah. and I'll pray about it. And I say, if you want me to give to this, dear God, let me know. I don't just give automatically out of emotions. I really pray about this stuff. And I said, usually what he does, he somehow sends me the exact money of the amount that I had in mind to give to whatever it was. I mean, it's really kind of weird how it happens. And I get so excited because my giving is just, it's really fun to be able to give yeah. and do like that. Yeah, and Mike and I, we do the same thing, you know, I'll come up with something and I'll say, you know, I really wonder if we should send so-and-so a thousand dollars or something. He's like, oh, I was just thinking the same thing. So we'll send it to people anonymously or not anonymously, just depends on who it is, but do stuff like that. Right now, all the Bibles come out of our personal thing, so that's one way we give. Um, yeah, so, you know. We give to children's homes, stuff like yeah. that. So, um, all that Those kind of Those are all thing. aside from yeah. the tithe. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, yes. Tour wanted to say that Ivan's birthday is today. <gasps> oh, happy, happy birthday! birthday. Oh, oh, way to go. <laughs> dude, happy birthday. Month is a good, June is a good month for birthdays, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Kimberly, what kind of church do we attend? So, our church of preference are Calvary chapels at the moment. Right now, if you can't go anywhere, um, we have a Christian resource page where we have our favorite pastors. We really like um, Jack Hibbs, Real Life with Jack Hibbs. He's a pastor in California. We like David Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. We like Charles Stanley. Yes. We like um, Pastor J.D. Farrarg. Um, we like Greg Laurie. He's a good one. So several of those people, um, are the ones that we do. Catherine, what do you do if you don't go to church? How would you tithe? So what we did when we didn't have a church, excuse me, um, we would give it to a local women's shelter, domestic violence shelter. We would give it to a children's home. We would send it to places like James Robinson and Joyce Meyer who help with um, sex trafficking and helps with kids get, you know, wells and shoes and those kinds of things. We would give it to specific families sometimes if a family had a major financial problem, like if their house burned down or they had a major medical issue that cost them a lot or something like that. So that's what and, some of the things... And if I can't go to church for a long period of time, but I'm watching somebody online like Jack Hibbs or uh, David Jeremiah, mm -hmm. those types of yeah. things, and I'm watching them, I will send some of my tithes, those types. Yeah. Because I feel like they're ministering to me spiritually, you know, and so I want to do that. I love giving to, to churches like that when I don't have my local church to give to because um, they're helping missionaries and yeah. like... Tar said the you know sex trafficking trafficking tra trafficking <laughs> I can't talk to that yeah. those types of things and so that's what I I do basically the yeah. same type of thing. Okay, so Cheryl says when you volunteer your time for a good cause, it's just as good as money, especially if you can't afford to give cash. No, it's not. It's it's not the no, same. You should be same. doing that and the yeah. other both. No, uh, when you give cash, you are you are telling God, I am trusting you with my finances, and here is a portion back to help with other things. That because you have blessed me with this, you never, ever, ever don't have enough money to pay your tithe, ever. I guarantee it. Mm -mm. If you start giving your 10% to God first, he will always make sure your bills are paid. Not your luxuries. But all your needs. But all your needs. Mm -hmm. So, 
if you can't pay it because you're going to Starbucks or whatever, that's it's not the same. You it it's not okay to volunteer instead of no. instead of. We've had cash, people say so. that they consider their gas driving to church as their tithe. I'm <sighs> so, you're kind of making an excuse not to have to give. And there's an old saying: yeah. you put uh, your money where your heart is. And I think God. God doesn't need the money from us, you know. Mm -hmm. And but the thing is, if you're willing to give your money to God, it's like a way of saying, "I trust you," mm -hmm. and you're the most important thing to me in the whole wide world. And it's just your sign of devotion mm -hmm. to Him. It's kind of like I heard a pastor once say, "You know, I I bought my son a box of candy." And I paid for it and gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So when they sat down, he said, the dad said, could I have a piece, one piece? And the son would say, no, no, it's mine. Now, how do you think that makes the dad feel? He paid for it all, and the son wouldn't even give him. It teaches you, mm -hmm. God wants you to tithe because it teaches you to be generous. It teaches you to be more loving it, or in giving and that type of thing. When you're just going... Um, you want to hold on to that money. As long as you're holding on to that money, you're afraid. You don't trust him. Yep. You don't trust him to take care of you, and he just wants you to trust him. Yeah. Trust him and obey him. It's an Bottom act line, of worship. It's an yeah. act of yeah. obedience, yeah. too, you yeah. know, and so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, and Amy says, ask, ask God to bring people into your life. Yes, if you are not sure where to send your tithe, ask him oh, to yeah. where to to do it and he will always tell you mm -hmm. so um okay let's see i think that is all the question yes that is it for that one okay um all right so guys check out our dining on a dining cookbook only a hundred or so copies left we also have um a new free printable for meal planning that Mike is um, putting a link in there right now that you can get for free off of our website, Chicken Meal Plans, because everybody's eating chicken right now, which you should be. Um, and we will be back on Wednesday. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we will see you guys. Wednesday. Oh, mom's leaving on Sunday, so Wednesday will be her last show. Yes. <laughs> so we'll all have a day of mourning. I'll listen to you. <laughs> bye bye, bye guys. guys. Living on